hey, just before the video gets started, I didn't realize that this would fall on Thanksgiving, but it, it did. I'm a great planner, but I just wanted to take a quick second to say I am very grateful for each and every one of you that watches my channel every single day. Whether or not you're celebrating Thanksgiving today, I, not everybody that watches me lives even in the US, but I figured why not take the opportunity to just thank you for watching my silly, stupid, fun videos. That being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy my review of the Attack on Titan finale. Okay, guys, let's talk about Attack on Titan. The ending is here. I watched it last night. I'm a little bit late, but we're here to talk about Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan's over. That's it. The ending of one of the greatest shows, in my opinion, of all time. I wanted to sort of break down the ending, talk about my thoughts on the ending, things I like, things I don't like, and maybe even decide for myself if I if I genuinely enjoyed the ending. Because I, I honestly, to start this off, I don't know if I liked the ending or not. There's a lot of aspects to it. So maybe you guys can help uh, clarify some things for me. I can elaborate on some of my takes and uh, we'll get to the bottom of this bad boy. I guess we'll start off with like the first aspect that I actually did really like. The first aspect that I really liked, all the previous iterations of the Titans. It kind of felt like something out of like a fan fiction, but it worked. Dude, just seeing all of them was just cool. Those that like used to be the Warhammer, just versions like this one has a pickaxe that could have backfired and been kind of cringe. Like, like, oh yeah, they're bringing them all back. Like sort of like Avengers Marvel-esque. But it worked because they explained how they were husks and everything. And then it worked into the whole paths thing. First 30, 45 minutes, kind of they kind of nailed it to me personally. I think it was all like, it was all doing really well. And this scene especially did very well. We got Doomer Zeke. That's like, life is pointless. Why are we here? Why do we even try? The best part about life is dying. And I was like, damn, because that's like, that's like Zeke at his lowest. And can somebody explain to me real quick? Why is it that whenever Levi finished off Zeke, it paused the rumbling? Like the controller, like Aaron's controller disconnected. Is it because of Zeke's blood? Because there was no more royal blood? Yeah, because I guess Zeke and Aaron were like the two, like one they once they interlocked it began it so then one part of that interlock being gone i see armin basically describing his happiest moment being like chasing chasing mikasa and aaron fleeting moment that seems so insignificant at the time but him describing that as like one of his happiest moments or one of the best moments of his life now, uh, like i said we were 34 minutes in i was like yes I was like they're nailing this yes this is beautiful because that's what it's always been about it's like them just spending the time together and enjoying their lives together while not knowing about what else is out there and then it connects with zeke in the base bowl and i was like yes dude and then zeke dies like it's nothing bro like it's nothing was armin talking to zeke like his conversation with him is that what convinced zeke to be like oh yeah we probably shouldn't do this and then him call out the levi he's like hey come kill me zeke went to the ends of the earth to make sure that the rumbling happened so if you're gonna change your mind on that after 80 percent of the world is already dead you better make a pretty big deal out of that you know what i mean he's just like like he should have I feel like had more of this epiphany sort of moment instead of just seeing the baseball. Like the concept was there, but I feel like they could have taken a little bit from other parts and put it towards this because that was a big deal. Zeke was captured by Aaron, but didn't he also believe in the rumbling being the best option because because he was captured by Aaron, he was like, was like, yeah, this, this is the best option probably. What about his conversation with Armin allowed him to escape? Will and stuff. He's like, oh yeah, I haven't found my way out of here. It's been like 20 years or like whatever. And then Armin's like, think about life and how good life is. And Zeke's like, yes. So I, I feel like this is where it slowly started to falter. I did like seeing all these, all these guys, uh, all the, the Titan inheritors. But like, were they manifesting? Like all the inheritors were start, starting to manifest because of Armin and Zeke's conversation. Time is different there. That's right. Time is neither here nor there there. It's just not in existence. Let's talk about probably like one of my least favorite aspects of the finale. And that's Ymir. I did like, dude, I really liked Colossal versus Attack Titan fight. I wish we had gotten to see them like brawl or something, bro. Like actually throwing hits and then they could have done a hit hits Aaron and then it, you see more of their conversation and then an uppercut goes to Armin and then it goes back to their conversation and it's just like them like beating the tar out of each other, bro. Okay, it copies Naruto and Sasuke a little bit. <laughs> You're right. But like, it'd be cool. No, like that'd be sick. I really liked the plot twist that Aaron was the one that sent the Titan after his mom. I liked that plot twist knee-jerk reaction. I was like, oh my gosh, <gasps> what? He's the one that made that decision. But then Star was like, why didn't he just tell that Titan, hey, go that way? Was there a genuine purpose to him having his mom killed? I don't think it was for character development. 
since he knew that the entire time, what was the point? But I thought this theory is kind of cool. He did it to get Grisha on board with Aaron's plan. Like the entire purpose of killing his mom was to affect Grisha's mentality, not Aaron's. He doesn't know as a kid, but it introduced the entire time is irrelevant to Aaron concept. Showing that like Aaron was inherently in control the entire time. Yeah, he when Grisha found out his wife was eating by Titan, just like how his sister was eating by dogs, Grisha's morality hesitation solidified into wrath and anger. TLDR, Aaron sent the spine of Titan at Dracara to convince Grisha to give him the founder's power. It's sort of like a, a, a gaslighting without even knowing you're being gaslit. The whole past, present, and future happening at the same time was too confusing for me. I think that's what I dislike the most. It's not a good reason to. I think Aaron only thought he had control over the past, but he was not free. He told Armin that he tried everything. Dude, I'm skipping forward a little bit. I hate that they pulled the whole, like, switcheroni. Like, the, the cutaway and you hear gunfire. It's like, no way, they just killed all those people. You did not need to pull some like cheesy like like scenario like that in the finale of the show, bro. Like you really just didn't need to do that. Okay, okay, okay. Let's let's go back a little. I, I skip forward a little bit. So yeah, action was first half really solid. First half was insanely solid. I'm glad Reiner got his moment. Reiner, as you guys know, still my favorite character in Attack on Titan. I still think the best character in Attack on Titan. Best written character. Everything about a Reiner's entire arc, I just liked the most. One thing I still don't like that much. Chat, was it ever foreshadowed that the Jaw Titan could be a bird or that could fly? I thought Falco getting the Jaw Titan was fine, but it being a flying Jaw Titan? I know last special, they, it, they teased it, but like before that, episode one, season four, are oh. you serious? Falco saw the bird in his first scene. That's true! Remember when we first met Falco, he was talking about how he was flying in a dream. Okay, it's not as, it's not as shoehorned anymore. I respect it. I like how this thing was manifest as like a parasite. This thing like squirming to find a new host. I liked that a lot. Why is John and Connie alive? Did Aaron kill his mother so that Connie can live? It's a funny question. I don't know. <laughs> I was I was pretty sad when yeah, I thought it was the end of John and Connie. Those are good characters. Yeah, it was really brutal. I thought the ending was getting really brutal. Like everybody was dying, everybody was turning to Titans. Like it was like doomsday. I wanted more of this. This is so badass. I wanted more of this. Do you find it weird how there weren't any past? colossal titans wait that's true they would have been enormous but like wasn't it aaron deciding what was summoned or it was aaron no it was ymir that was deciding i i don't know but yeah why why was there not another wait why were there no other colossals if aaron was controlling everything in the past present and future couldn't he have done better that's what a lot of people say but we have to just leave it up to aaron says he tried everything similar to the fact that i don't know what it means when they say that ymir uh, another part i i really wasn't a big fan of Ymir's entire reasoning was that she was in love with King Fritz. Why did Ymir love King Fritz? King Fritz destroyed everything. Didn't he like cut out her tongue? You could say Stockholm syndrome, but like, it's just like for a series that was so calculated, that seems so vague or up in the air. You know what I mean? That I think that might be my least favorite part about the finale, but doesn't, doesn't, I think Armin like asks, asks Aaron, and he's like, why? I think this is actually the scene, isn't it? Only Ymir knows why Mikasa is also this like chosen one. I don't like whenever it's just like, oh, <laughs> don't ask me, man. Ymir knows. I, I don't know. I may have invented Ymir. She knows that, not me, man. Because she killed Eren. She killed the one she loved as Ymir couldn't. That showed that it was possible. So Ymir standing there. Ooh, wait, hang on. Wait, we're kind of, wait, you guys are kind of cooking here. So that's why she's standing there because this proved everything that she thought previously wrong. That despite Mikasa's love for Eren, she was still able to kill him. Yeah, but still the reasoning for loving Fritz doesn't make sense. But I do, I do like that. I do like that. Yeah, dude, like why? Give me a reason other than Stockholm Syndrome. Give me any other reason. So what, Ymir just wanted to see how far Mikasa would go for someone that she loved and how much she would do. I also want to bring this up. I feel like anime fans are too easy to impress sometimes. Isayama was a genius because the show started 13 years ago. And if you have the Titan power, you have 13 years to live. 4,100 likes. Bro, I guarantee you Isayama's like, oh damn, that's kind of a cool coincidence. <laughs> Yeah, dude, he delayed the airing of the finale to make sure 
It happened on year 13. Just wait until silence 27181 finds about finds out about what Oda's doing with One Piece, bro. It's gonna be crazy. My main issue here is Ymir could have stopped everything right from the start. No need for royal blood or killing the founding titan. She just needs to realize that she could break the bond through Mikasa. Isn't that kind of the problem with the entire series, though, if you, like, look into it enough? Is that, like, whenever you give characters and everything, like, too much power or too much ability to change the world, it then opens as many doors as possible. How I feel about Jujutsu Kaisen with Gojo uh, or, like, Sukuna is, like, when you open the door to a character so stupidly strong, how are you supposed to, like pivot from that you know what i mean oh this is gonna be so sad oh man this is gonna be really sad yui ishikawa mikasa's va cried after recording her last line as mikasa ackerman that's the last line that's f <laughs> oh <laughs> they look so uncomfortable they're like bro bro I'm ready to get out of here. I just got cast as Brownbeard's dog in one piece. I got more important things to do. Um, okay, what's next? What's next? I do know that this was changed a bit from the manga too. Uh, and that's one of the videos that I have because I wanted to see. Okay, I thought this I thought this line was funny. Like at least 10 years. Like he actually had a timeline of how long Mikasa should be like stuck on him. I can't take that face seriously. Yeah, that might be like one of the worst parts about this is just like the way his face looks. Like why he looks so goofy. This is the manga. No, I don't want that. I want her to think about me and no one else for the rest of life. Fingers fine, man. Even after I die, I want her to be hung up on me for a while. 10 years at least. It's like his face looks way better in this, no? I really do, but ugh. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> I mean, at least it was kind of real of Armin to be like, yeah, that's really pathetic, bro, that you would say that. Like, that's really sad. Like, I hate, I, I hate whenever stuff is so simplified, though, to where, like, lines like this, lines like this take me out. I don't know why. I just wanted to do it. What do you mean you don't know why you just wanted to do it? Like there's, there has to be like, you can you can bring in like the past and the present and the future and be like, I had to. That's why this resolution was the only possible. Like he's saying like, he, he like it all happened just cause he's stupid. But then like on the flip side of things, he's like, I'm the only one that could have done this. Like I know everything. I checked every possible solution. Like you can't have it both ways. Aaron said he didn't find a way cause he was stupid. That line was added for the anime. I know it's supposed to be like sort of a sweet moment. D is it not more like depressing to you guys? He's just like, yeah, I'll see you hell all right yep we'll be be hanging out there we'll be suffering there like that kind of takes me out too man this is one aspect of the finale i didn't quite grasp was aaron's conversation with all of them and then he like erased their memory did he like kind of explain his reasoning to all of them and then would was like all right you're gonna remember this later or like at the same time whenever i die like at my moment of death this is whenever like everything will snap into place. Yeah, probably. But they didn't bother to show us. Yeah, I feel like that entire sequence was very skipped over. But it was the most important, like one of the most important aspects of the episode was Aaron's conversation with all of them. And it was just like, oh, he talked to all of them. And like, here's their memories back. And we don't get to see them, but like they're impacted by it. You know what I mean? I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a comparison to sort of like Naruto here. It's not a very good comparison. In Naruto Shippuden, Guy Sensei, like in his fight with Madara, should have died. Reiner, I don't know how I feel about like all all the titans just being reset and they're just like chilling and they're like oh i'm not a titan anymore and guess what that clock that I, that was ticking for my life yeah it's it's gone i've i've got my whole life ahead of me now i'm not saying i like wish for death and i'm just, i'm not saying it's it's not a i'm not saying it's a bad thing that it was sort of like more of a disney ending and like way more people live than die oh i say that but like 80 percent of civilization live i feel like it would have been more befitting for the end of reiner's journey and character arc to like give his life to try to stop more people from dying. Isayama wanted it to be a somewhat happy ending, but it's not. If you watch the post credit scene, which we're going to get to in a second, it's not even remotely happy. It's actually kind of dark, like really depressing. Oh, but this line did hit. You were all I ever needed from his mom. That was very good. That, 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 that fixed everything. That patched everything up. Because like knowing Reiner's backstory with his parents and like how he did it because he thought they wanted him to be more. And can I say, I thought there was going to be a lot more to Historia. Uh, having a child still don't understand anything tied to her child i don't either it should have been me that's not what i'm asking people theorized about her baby being the next beast titan that the powers still existed oh so like it was perfect timing that's why they showed the birth of the child it was like as the child was birthed aaron died so it prevented 
the baby from becoming a titan, basically. Okay, that kind of makes sense, I guess. I thought Levi's ending was kind of just... I don't want to say milk toast. Maybe it's just because it wasn't elaborated on. Like he's just chilling. I mean, I guess what what can you elaborate on? Also, I still, f I guess they did kind of conclude Gabby's whole arc, but I feel like she never got a true like ending moment. Also, where the hell did Gabby keep that that goddamn bear at 50 caliber the entire? I know she's talked about bringing it and she's like, I might need this, but where was she stowing that bat? That thing weighs more than her, bro. Yeah, and then. Mikasa seeing like them and then crying that that kind of hurt really bad felt like she didn't get peace until the bird flew up okay now let's talk about uh I guess sort of post credits scene I almost wish this hadn't been a part of the post credits and had just been a part of the show but it basically just shows like civilization continuing them coming to visit the grave like civilization develops like crazy like Omega develops and then war begins and basically everything's just like nuked and like leveled again. And then like civilization ceases to exist again, like absolutely obliterated, even the tree. Well, not the tree, but you'll see. And I, I guess that somebody said this in chat, like, did you think peace was gonna exist? It's not about whether it did or didn't. I just feel like that's a very dark ending, but then it shows this kid and this dog and like the tree still stands. Not that it can't exist more so that it doesn't last. Then he goes in and it's like, oh, well, here we go again. Repeat this bad boy. That post credit was added in the manga weeks after it ended because of the controversy. It's the second ending. Wait, really? Okay, anyways, I wanted to watch this video and I'll link both. I have two videos I want to watch. This one's about the end credits and the other one is about the manga differences. There is a small and sadly loud minority on Twitter and Reddit that seem to think, quote, it was all for nothing. Well, is oh, fuck. it's talking about me. <clears throat> or is it yet another hyper overreaction from toxic people? Okay, okay. I don't think it's toxic to see it that way. I think I just see it as more putting a damper on what's trying to be a happy ending. You know what I mean? Flock simps. <laughs> Jaeger bombs. <laughs> Jaeger ists. Bro, what is happening? If you enjoy- I'm not a Jaegerist, man. I'm not. And I hated Flock. I couldn't stand Flock. I actually forgot to bring this up. One of my favorite parts about the finale, and honestly, I feel like they, they had a better moment than even like Aaron, Armin, and Mikasa was Reiner, Peak, and uh, I guess mostly Reiner and Peak having that moment of like, we're still together. And I, like, I don't remember where exactly the moment was. It was very brief. It was like 10 to 15 seconds. But I think like them fighting for what's right. I don't know. But eventually spring blossoms again, giving a sense of renewal. Aaron killing his own mom ruins the why was my mom eaten by a titan? Wait, true! And now their children have grown up and their children now have their own children. Mikasa really dragged her whole family up this hill to say hi to her dead crush. Because they're fucked up. Left. Then it fades to actually one of the harder to watch like, moments. Well, she might be gave. buried with the scarf but that doesn't mean she wore it her entire life she may have just been asked or she may have just asked to be to have been buried with it the aot wiki tweeted out what is actually on this gravestone and what it oh here forever rest peacefully my most beloved my dear sort of hard to see rock but this is mikasa's gravestone she chose to be buried right next to aaron the time they spent together Dude, poor john john sitting in the kitchen like hey mikasa we gotta talk about our, our gravestone sites and mikasa's like I already got mine. <laughs> I said I didn't want an AOT 2, but I'll be honest. An AOT sequel where you see the inner machinations of politic geopolitics and the discussions of destroying paradise and then seeing that come to fruition would be kind of gas. Seemingly in the blink of an eye, paradise becomes something even we humans in our world have not yet achieved. Yeah, where's the Walmart and the 7-Eleven? So Dude, that's what become... I'm saying. It looks exactly like the hidden rain or uh, hits like the where the the city where hit lives in dragon ball super you see a new ending of aot that they didn't include in the episode no okay i like this ending and honestly i get why people would have been upset with it ending before this i feel like this puts a very nice bow on everything i changed my mind some people will theorize that this is setting up a sequel to aot no or that no boy please don't i know what i said about the mecca just don't do it just lay it to rest on top of that the whole criticism of the ending being all for nothing is a crock of you know what obviously this has to be just trolls and doomers who have i don't think it's like i get what he means i feel like it's a pretty uh understandable argument you know what's probably gonna happen it could have very well ended and just left it up to be like humanity may continue it probably will continue its path of of violence in that cycle who knows if the future's changed forever and says like no 
Everybody dies after a while. And like everybody, everything's nuked. And nothing matters. None of this matters. Mongo is like present day. Ah, uh, it's a very smart change though. They made it look like hundreds and hundreds and maybe even like a thousand years into the future. Y'all have already linked a couple of the manga differences, but this video, I think at the end, showcases three of the biggest changes. And I wanted to see them. The scene of Armin and Aaron talking and they say their final words to each other was expanded quite significantly for the anime. Some lines were added and one key line seems to have been removed. Importantly, the anime version left out a controversial line where Armin says to Aaron, thank Thank you for turning yourself into a mass murderer for our sake. Granted, right after this, Armin says oh. something to the effect of, I swear I won't let this grave mistake be for nothing, clarifying that he disavows and- That's a terrible line. Thank you for turning yourself for into a mass choice. murderer. Whole, thanks for murdering 80% of the world line. And it coming from Armin. Yeah, that's a terrible line. Readers. That sounds like a line that's like in the first draft. It's also kind of like Aaron being like, yeah, this all happened because I'm stupid. And it's just like, it's not like black and white like that, man. One other thing that was left out that surprised me was an important clarification with Aaron's plan. We learned here that Aaron expected his old allies to stop him and become heroes in the process. But in the manga, Aaron confesses that, quote, even if I didn't know you'd stop me, I think I still would have flattened the earth. I want what? It would have been fine if they had failed and everything still would have been flattened? No, that's a, that's also a terrible line. I was on the assumption that he knew exactly what was going on. And finally, in this scene, they added a few lines about Aaron being an idiot and a child and not knowing why he did what he did. I guess this was as a means for Isayama to say as clearly as possible to the real world readers who think Aaron is this badass poster child that this character was wrong. I think he really doesn't want people to like worship Aaron. No as, at that's, that's a probably a good clarification, actually. Yeah. Like, Aaron isn't a good person by any means. I know it's hard because, like, he was put in the position to, like, make all the decisions. But he's still not a good person for having to make the decisions. One final change which caught me by surprise. In the time skip in the anime, Levi is living with Onyankapon and Yelena, while Gabby and Falco are working on some kind of farm. This is all fine, but it's slightly different in the manga. In Isayama's original version, we see Levi with Gabby, Falco, and Onyankapon in a city that I kind of thought looked like the AOT equivalent of London, England. I'm Wait, this is so much cooler, like all of them together. I don't know, because kind of, that's why I felt like Levi was so alone at the end. But this one, he has his comrades and people he's met and they're like living life together. He didn't mention the change that you guys linked though about how uh, how much further along the post credit scene looked than in the manga. Like, I feel like that's probably the biggest change. And it was one of the smartest changes. The new ending, as beautiful as it is, I, there's like a part of me that understands why they didn't include it though, because they didn't want it to just be about Mikasa and Eren. Because a lot of people made the argument that it was kind of like, it was like Mikasa and Eren's relationship wasn't like shoehorned in or anything. I feel like it wasn't focused on enough in the bulk of the show. And I think that's that might be why this wasn't included is because that wasn't the main goal of the finale or the main goal of the show in general. It's still really pretty though. This is the opening. It's just weird that we make an intro and outro and then not use it though. There it is. I was wrong. She did carry that back bad boy around the entire time. Look, she did carry that thing around the entire time. I think after talking with you guys and kind of uh, exploring the themes, I actually do like the parallel of Ymir to Mikasa and like what Ymir was looking for or was trying to find out. I still think the whole time travel and understanding what was going to happen the entire time threw in way too many curveballs into the entire plot line that was really tight before. But overall, I think it was a good ending, man. And over the course of this uh, stream slash video, I think you guys actually did kind of change my mind on the post credit scene. I didn't like it at first. I, I kind of do now. The end of Attack on Titan. Not perfect. I don't think such a perfect ending exists, but I think it was one that still did attack on titan justice i think it did